I printed off a couple of simple mandala patterns. I'm going to slip it under the glass, pattern side up, I found this set of puffy paint. I'm gonna start filling in the pattern. I wanna start with the piece of the pattern that are separate from each other. It's time to fill in the remaining sections. Next step is to finish the swirls. I'm gonna give it the frame a quick coat of the same turquoise paint. The final thing I need to do to the picture pattern is outline the swirls again. I'm just gonna add some clear glue to all of the untouched glass. I love how pretty these paints look in the sunlight. So I'm going to start with about a third of a cup of baking soda, two teaspoons of water, and I'm also going to need a teaspoon of glue, a little bit of paint to start. I want this to be nice and thick and chunky. I'm going to start with a, just a little bit of a burgundy colored paint. I am going to reuse an old canvas and I'm just going to cover this up to make really chunky petals working towards that center. So I'm just going to make some small petals petals, dab this all over the middle of my flower here. This beautiful piece of art was so fun to make with homemade 3D paint. Taking this canvas and starting off with just some white paint, acrylic, and just put this on here. Now again, you could use whatever acrylic you happen to have handy. Very lightly paint all over my surface. Moving the paint around in a very random manner. You don't need to worry, you could use whatever colors you like. Now I'm taking some just basic acrylic paint a polymer, it's a low viscosity polymer, which I'm adding to my paint to thin it. Some white, white is my first color of choice. A little blob of green on top of there. Again, I'll pop that on top there. Again, you can see I'm just literally just blobbing these down. Take my balloon and I'm going to smoosh it down as hard as I can. And I'm gonna lift it up like this. So look at that, we've got these gorgeous colors on here. And just see what happens with those do something similar look at that isn't that beautiful i'm going to smoosh it all the way down i'm actually going to do a little second one just there smoosh it doesn't matter if it switches around a little bit i've really enjoyed making this for you today I found this storage box at the thrift store. To start, I'm gonna use some black paint to help cover up that pattern. When painting fabric, I always find it best to water it down a little bit. And now I wanna add the brown paint. Thinned it out with a little bit of water as well. And I'm gonna use a chip brush to apply it as it will look more natural with a little bit peeking through the brown. The final step to making my faux leather look real is to cover the paint with wax. The wax gives the paint a really nice supple feel that mimics real leather. I'm thrilled with how good this storage box looks now. I have some clear plastic Christmas ornaments stuck on some wooden skewers and popped into an old piece of styrofoam. I'm using some Krylon sea glass spray paint and I have some um, nautical netting and I'm going to put it around the ornaments. I'm just using a little hot glue to secure it at the top. I'm just going to let the glue set and then I'm going to trim off the tops. To finish off our faux nautical floats, I'm using um, some jute. Look at them. They look like real glass, don't they? I love this project. They're so cute. I saw some candles from Powdery Barn. I thought it'd be fun to try making them myself. I'm going to put a little glue into a small container and then add a bit of paint. Now that I have the glue tinted, I'm going to paint it all over the glass dish on the outside. I'm going to leave these for a few hours before moving on. Using some Mod Podge, I'm going to paint it around the dishes. I can sprinkle the white glitter all over it, and then when it dries, the glitter will stay in place. I grabbed these pillar candles from the dollar store, and I'm going to melt them down. I'm just going to use a couple of skewers to hold the wicks in place. I want to add some essential oil to give my candles a beautiful scent. It's time to fill the glass dishes. The final thing to do is to remove the skewers and then trim the wicks. How pretty are these Pottery Barn inspired candles? They even smell as good as they look. To get the table ready, I'm going to start by giving it a quick clean. Next, I want to give it a light sanding. I want to wipe it again. I like to start with the pedestal first and then do the top. I'm going to add and combine some water with some white paint. To apply the wash, I'm going to use this chip brush because the bristles are natural and uneven. To soften up those lines a little bit, I can wipe them with just a damp paper towel. I absolutely love how pretty this table is now and how much the lighter color changes its look. Grab a pre-made round tabletop and set a planter on top. Grab some Jenga pieces, glue these down to keep our tabletop from sliding around. Grab some wood stain and put it all over. Now it's some clear polyurethane. Next, it's time for two-part epoxy and your favorite colors that you wanna mix. Rub it all over the board. Next, grab your hair dryer, and we're going to use low heat. Just keep doing this back and forth. Now, once it dries for 24 hours, we're going to do the same process again. 
Now it's time to make our table. Take that base and you can use it for storage for blankets in the living room. Go ahead and put your tabletop on and look at that. I hope you love this project. It's so easy to do. Drawn a line straight down the middle of the drawers and I'm going to use a red and a blue paint. When the first color has dried, I then take the other color and paint on top of it. Then take your spray bottle and spritz over the wet paint and then set a timer for three minutes. When the time is up, we have to start removing the water now. And I use a toilet roll. Now I'm moving on to the top of the dresser and I've split the top in half. Now all my drawers are done and dry and I'm taking a stencil and some modeling paste and applying it to the stencil. I finished off the dresser by doing the stencil again on the top and here it is. I hope you enjoyed this and you're inspired to have a go at this crazy technique. Mm -hmm.